Life Audio. Merry Christmas, listeners. My name is Shara Donahue, and this is The Bible Never Said That. On this podcast, we talk about popular sayings that make their way through culture and the church, but are biblically inaccurate. For this year's Christmas series, we are specifically looking at The Bible Never Said That, Even If Christmas Songs Do. So we are looking at songs and song lyrics that either are completely theologically wrong or could be deemed controversial. I was going to cover the three kings and discuss how they didn't arrive the night Jesus was born and that though there were three gifts, we aren't sure there were only three wise men. But then as I was listening to my Christmas music station and Judy Garland's voice began to sing, have yourself a merry little Christmas a new plan was made. As her satiny voice laid out the lyrics, I found myself thinking, what a big fat lie. So here we are discussing the lines of Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas. Now, There are a couple versions of the song, but we'll start with Judy Garland's version written by Hugh Martin and Ralph Blaine, because it was the first version. This song was originally sung in a scene from the movie, Meet Me in St. Louis. To many these days, this song is a Christmas classic, but to those old enough to remember, it probably reminds them of the movie, like Celine Dion's My Heart Will Go On reminds people of Titanic, and Disney's Let It Go has people's memories charging through the snow like Elsa. Garland's character, Esther, was comforting Tootie, her younger sister, with this song because the family was being forced to move from St. Louis to New York. And she sings, Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Let your heart be light. Next year, all our troubles will be out of sight. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Make the Yuletide gay. Next year, all our troubles will be miles away. Once again, as in olden days, happy golden days of your faithful friends who are dear to us will be near to us once more. Someday soon, we all will be together if the fates allow. Until then, we'll have to muddle through somehow. So have yourself a merry little Christmas now. It's sweet. So what's out of line theologically with this song? Well, it's the false hope placed in the potential that the future holds, but is never guaranteed. Next year, all our troubles will be out of sight. Next year, all our troubles will be miles away. The updated version doesn't even delay the cessation of trouble. It says, from now on, our troubles will be out of sight. Or from now on, our troubles will be miles away. Unfortunately, (laughs) nope, the Bible doesn't say that. We are those who live knowing Jesus' words from John 16, 33. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Now, I have used that verse before because it is powerful and it is a reminder we always need. I do hope this Christmas has less trouble for you than last year, that your troubles are miles away. But I know for some of you, like me, trouble feels close this Christmas. Hear me clearly. I am not opposed to having expectant hope. In fact, the practice of Advent is focused on hopeful expectation and literally means the arrival of something or someone. It is a celebration of the arrival of Jesus who overcomes all the trouble of the world. I think we should be filled with joy and merriment as we celebrate this redemptive truth. And... We must also recognize that the coming of trouble, this side of heaven, cannot be predicted 
or controlled by us. We cannot hope that trouble will not come, but we can hope within the trouble. Like the shepherds of the Christmas story, I long for an angel to appear in front of me proclaiming, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people, like they did in Luke 2, 10 through 11. I wait for the miraculous in my own life and am sometimes discouraged by the mundane tasks I find it hiding behind. Even as a person sure in her faith, peace on earth seems such an impossible ideal. I am painfully aware of the fallen nature of the world. I cannot fool myself into dreaming about this tolerant peace that Christmas specials preach without pointing to Jesus. I know Jesus brought peace to earth that night in the city of David, but I can't help wonder how much remained after he ascended to heaven. No troubles in sight. Hmm. I must be looking in the wrong direction. (laughs) Whether buried in a pillow or fixed on Netflix, the troubles are only obscured and temporarily forgotten. I cannot stick my head inside a Christmas tree and say, the troubles are gone. (laughs) The good news is that Jesus's presence through the Holy Spirit provides rest for all that seek him and salvation for those he calls his own. And yet, peace seems elusive. Rumors of wars, racial injustice, plagues, and any other unspeakable terror that taunts our daily existence. We are still assured of peace within our souls because of our Savior. But peace on earth? It just seems so far away. Jesus told us in John 14, 3, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am you may be also. We don't have to let our hearts be troubled. But that doesn't mean we won't encounter problems. What a relief that we are promised peace in its fullness is coming to earth once more. And Jesus has made room for us to join him. This anticipation, this wondering what life will look like next year, and this falling asleep, begging God to move, all point me to that baby in the manger who grew to be the Savior on the cross. Seeing him gives me the strength to engage in moving towards peace by praying for patience and holding tight to his word as carols, true or false, hang in December's crisp air. One of the great promises of Christmas is that we can have hope in the dark, for we know the light has come and the darkness will not overcome it. Widowed father of six and literary great Henry Wadsworth Longfellow endured in his asking for a harmonious world and goodwill towards men in the midst of trouble. And I reflect on this story each Christmas season. Longfellow listened carefully to Holy Cantana's calling for merriment through the noise of the Civil War. Through sorrow, he wrote the poem, I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day. From the hospital bedside of his severely injured son, a wartime lieutenant, he wrote, Till ringing, singing on its way, the world revolved from night to day. A voice, a chime, a chant sublime of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Then from each black accursed mouth, the cannon thundered in the south. And with the sound, the carols drowned of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Then pealed the bells more loud and deep. God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. The wrong shall fail, the right prevail with peace on earth, goodwill to men. When the heaviness of the world presses in, Like Longfellow, we can turn to the mighty promises of the living God for strength. He cannot be shaken. 
so we are emboldened to face whatever trouble might come our way. With great joy, we can offer ourselves as ambassadors carrying the promise of powerful reconciliation because this hope we have. The Prince of Peace has interrupted the routine of common men with the glory of the Lord before, and he will do it again. Just because we have trouble wrapping our minds around what this will look like doesn't keep it from being true. There will be a day where all our troubles will be over and far away. But that is not this day. But he is always our sustainer. What's interesting is the original lyrics to Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas were actually different. Maddie Shaw Roberts reported that the song's lyrics, as dreamed up by Martin and Blaine, evoked a very different Christmas feeling. They said, Have yourself a merry little Christmas. It may be your last. Next year, we may all be living in the past. Now, Garland objected to the lyrics, Shaw says, apparently saying they were too depressing. And if she were to sing them, Margaret will cry and they'll think I'm a monster. Eager to please their leading lady, Hollywood executives requested a rewrite. They said, no, no, no. It's a sad scene, but we want sort of an upbeat song, which will make it even sadder if she's smiling through her tears, Martin said. Gosh, those lyrics are a bit of a downer. But hey, those ones are true. (laughs) Many of us are greeting the Christmas season knowing it may be our last or thinking of it because we are missing someone whose last Christmas was last year. I want to give a word of comfort and true hope for those of you who are mourning this Christmas. Grief tends to be a surprise guest during the holidays. It can spring up in the form of a breathless gasp, an unforeseen rush of tears, or a whisper of undefined melancholy in the midst of our celebration. But it does not show up to torture. Remember, it reveals itself because we've lost someone worth grieving. The first Christmas when a loved one is gone can make the lights that line the streets we drive feel dim. And the beauty we wish our hearts could hold may be hard to find in the thickness of such deep sorrow. Christmas carols can feel like an unfair taunt, but despite all the ups and downs, mourning leads us into the hope we have in Christ Jesus has not once failed to anchor the grief-laden soul. Hard is too weak a word to bear the weight of the strength it takes to act like life goes on when it feels like life is over. But the great truth of Christmas is that death, despair, and disaster do not get the final word. Luke tells us, the angels declared, a savior has been born to you. Jesus is a savior for the heart sick. He is a savior for the lost. He is a savior for the mourning. This is Jesus, a savior for us all. We can take every thought and emotion that tells us we are alone and let it be tended to by the truth we celebrate at Christmas. The Virgin Mary conceived and gave birth to a son, and we call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. As Matthew 1.23 teaches, God is with us. When denial, anger, and depression try to close in, we remember Psalm 34, 18. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. It takes a step of faith to believe in this closeness, but it is there. God is with us. Throughout scripture, God reminds us that what we have hoped for is true, real, and sweetly ours. In Zephaniah three seventeen, he soothes the places within us that feel forsaken with these words. The Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. He will take great delight in you. In his love, he will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with singing. 
for those who have lost but still put up the tree. Wrap the presents and cook the meal, even though you know your precious one will be missing. May your courage be bolstered by knowing that God is with you. To those who are in the midst of so much trouble that you just couldn't do it this year, it's okay. Really. When we are too weary to fill a table because the shadow of death lingers, the great news is that Psalm 23 tells us Jesus prepares one before us. Take comfort in knowing that God is with you. I do hope, dear listeners, that your Christmas is merry. Merry because of the hope that comes through Jesus and makes our hearts light. God is with us. And for those in Christ, that will always be our reality, in trouble or in peace. Isaiah 9-6 proclaims, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and their government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Will you pray with me? Oh, Jesus, come. We want to believe, for you are the only solution for peace on earth. Help us when we are in trouble and when we are merry to see you clearly all our days, to recognize that our blessings and our help come from you and your truths can't be shaken. Please comfort those who are mourning a loved one or in trouble this Christmas. Counsel them and surround them with people who will offer good and true help. Lord, help us to see you and honor you through this Christmas season. And please bless us with a joy-filled, hopeful Christmas in the midst of whatever we are experiencing. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining me today as we conclude our Christmas series. I hope you'll join us for our New Year episode next time. And the verses, song, and articles referred to during this episode can be found in the show notes at lifeaudio.com slash podcast or on iTunes. Thank you to all of you who have reviewed the podcast. And until next time, may you seek the abundant life Jesus died to give and live in the truth that sets people free.